All right, so here we are with chapter 10, section 6, uh, the law of cosines. We've done the law of sines already, so this one is cosines, which we'll use cosine instead of sines. Uh, we're going to use it to find the side lengths of, uh, sorry, and angle measures of triangles. And remember that even though we're using cosine or sine in the last one, these are actually just regular triangles and not necessarily always right triangles. So taking a look at our first formula, and yes, it does look kind of lengthy, but that is just because we are trying to figure out, are you at angle A, B, or C? So it is technically the same pattern for each of these. Uh, if you have um, or you're looking for side A, you use B and C in each of the formula. If you're doing B, A and C are the other sides that are in the formula. And then C has a C angle, as they do here, um, but it uses A and B within the formula. So here's your non-right triangle that we're talking about. And again, remember, angle A is this across from side A, angle B across from B, and then C across from side C. Uh, remember that the largest angle of a triangle is the angle opposite of the longest side. And so this would potentially be the longest side. So we do want to kind of be able to set that up. So we're going to try the law of cosines. And again, it's a little bit of algebra going on in here. It does look like the Pythagorean theorem, but then we subtract out this kind of um, double counted piece here. So first thing that we're looking at in our first example is to use these given measurements to find the third side, and we need to round to the nearest tenth. So looking at the triangle that they gave us, we are given that angle C is 32.2. So if we go through um, naming this, we could have angle A, angle B, and angle C, which we are going to represent as 32.2. This is then side C across, side B we've already got is 5, and side A across here is 8. So no picture given, but we can determine that picture from here. So which formula do we need to use if we already have a C, an angle C, sorry, a B and an A? The only one that uses angle C is this one at the bottom. So if we take the time to write down that formula, we're going to say that the length of side C is equal to the length of A squared plus B squared minus 2 times A times B times, all of these are multiplied, the cosine of the capital letter C angle. Again, that formula there. So now all we need to do is fill them in. A is always going to be 8 and B is 5 and then C is going to be 32.2 in this case. So filling this in, our A again is 8, so we'll have 8 squared, that you'll add to 5 squared, but then you'll subtract the combination of 2 times 8 times 5 times the cosine of 32.2 degrees. All right, so thinking of how we're going to solve this, there are actually kind of three sections. One of them is 8 squared, and from that we'll add 5 squared, and then from that we'll subtract this entire piece, which is kind of a lot. So breaking it down into each of those pieces, 8 squared is 64, and then 64 is going to be added to 25. And then to subtract from that, we're going to take 2 times 8 times 5 times cosine of 32.2. So all along in your calculator, you can just do 2 times 8 times 5 times cosine of 32.2. So you don't necessarily need to do it in any order because it's all multiplying. And as long as you're in degree mode, you can press enter and you'll get 67. There's my red. 67.6955. So in order to get our C squared, we're going to have to combine each of these pieces together. So 64 plus 25 minus that 67.6955 leaves you with 21.3045. Notice that that equals C squared. And so we're not actually done with finding the length of the third side until we take the square root of both of these pieces. So if we take the square root of 21.30, we're going to end up with a C length of 
4.6157. It does say round to the nearest tenth, so our C value is 4.6, and it doesn't give a unit, so just 4.6. All right, uh, this last step here where you take the square root is probably the most forgotten one because you just have these equal signs and you forget that it's equal to c squared. And so we do want to square root. All right, the next one here is giving you all of the lengths of the sides and not any of the angles. And so because of that, we are going to have to use inverse to get back to an angle. Anytime that you're trying to find an angle with cosine, sine, and tangent, we need to use the inverse to get there. So this side A is actually 8. Uh, this side B is 9. And this side C is 7. So remember that they are trying to give us uh, or get us to find C. And so taking a look again at our formulas, the only one of these that uses capital C or the angle of C is this one with C squared. So we are going to use the same formula as the previous one. That won't always happen. So a squared plus b squared minus 2 times a times b times cosine of the c, capital C, angle. All right, so filling in what we know, uh, we have 7 squared for c. a is 8 again, and b is 7. Then we're going to subtract 2 times 8 times 7 times cosine of c. All right, so again, breaking it into its pieces, we have each of these, and then actually this that we will kind of say is multiplied by cosine of c. So if we break it into those sections, we'll have, um, uh, I've rewritten one of these numbers wrong. Oh, this is nine. Okay. Uh, so then let's change this to a 9 then as well. Okay, so b is 9. So we have 49 equals 64 plus 81. And then to that, we're going to subtract 2 times 9 times 8. Or 2 times 8 times 9. So we have 144 that's being multiplied by cosine of c. So in order to solve this, we're going to subtract out the pieces that are being added. So this positive 64 is going to be subtracted to the other side. So 49 minus 64 leaves you with negative 15. And all of that still equals the rest of this, which is 81 minus 144 times cosine of C. All right, then the next step is going to be subtracting this positive 81. So subtracting 81 leaves you with negative 96. And that still equals the rest of this, which is 144 times cosine of C. Remember, we're trying to get C by itself or even cosine of C. So in order to solve this, we are going to divide both sides by this negative 144 that's being multiplied by cosine. So negative 144 divided into ne negative 96 leaves you with 0.6 repeating and it still equals cosine of C. But then we need to take the cosine inverse of both sides in order to get c by itself. So we're taking cosine inverse of 0 0.6 repeating and that's going to equal the cosine inverse of the cosine and so Cosine inverse of cosine cancels, and so you're left with C, but then cosine inverse of uh, 0.6 repeating. So what I do is have the 0.6 repeating on my calculator and do cosine inverse uh, from second cosine, and then do it of the answer, so then we'll have to type 0.6 repeating. Uh, and then we end with our angle measure of 48. 
point to the nearest tenth two degree. So finding an angle measure is a little bit harder than finding a side length because you do have to end up using the inverse of cosine, but it does work out the same. So you'll always have to subtract this number, subtract that number, and divide by whatever you get as your um, product here. All right, so that was the law of cosine, and so you have an assignment that will go through a few of those.